So I want to preface this by saying that uh, with, with rechargeable magnesium batteries, uh, there is a fundamental issue surrounding the the mobility of, of magnesium ions in, in, uh, in, in general. And, and that's down to the fact that it's like super small in size compared to lithium and has uh, double the charge of, of lithium. So uh, for that reason, we have like a high charge density. Now, the problem with high charge density is that the mobility of the ion suffers. And it's like super lousy in the, in the solid state uh, structure. Uh, so what we have done essentially is to find an alternative way how we can sort of mitigate this sort of sluggish kinetics of magnesium 2 plus ions by coupling it with a monovalent uh, companion, let's say. So something like lithium and also we have tried with sodium. Now, the both monovalent ions are like faster because they're monovalent and the, the charge density is much less than the divalent magnesium 2 plus. And as a result, so when we try to couple them together. The idea was that we compensate for the lack of mobility of magnesium 2 plus. So we uh, sort of engage more of the active material, but at the same time, we try to improve the, the and facilitate the, the mobility of the magnesium 2 plus also. Uh, sh shortly to say the reason we took both lithium and sodium as two different cases it's just we were curious to see uh, what is the size effect because lithium and magnesium are similar in size Le uh, magnesium and sodium are quite different in size so that that was the idea behind the work to start with yeah So for this type of uh, research work, it's, it's very important uh, that we decouple as many effects as possible. And for that, you need, need like a, a variety of uh, analytical techniques. Uh, so what we went for was we went for a whole holistic approach. So we went uh, looked into the compositional analysis. So we use ICP OES, inductive coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy. Then we tried to really focus on the structural aspect of, of uh, the material that we were using. So we really focused a lot on XRD, a uh, very well-known technique. Uh, and finally, we were also curious to see the reaction mechanism and really investigate the reaction mechanism. And for that, we use uh, eels or to the full form of which is uh, electron energy loss spectroscopy. Uh, now, I need to also add that the idea behind our work was that we are going to marry both experimental and theoretical techniques. So we had uh, experimental techniques that I just talked about. We coupled it with DFT, uh, density functional theory, to really model the system, uh, calculate the energy barriers. Now, uh, it's should be mentioned that all of this were like uh, the, the, the advanced techniques that we use, but we prefaced all of this with basic electrochemistry because after all, it's, it's a battery. So you, you need to have like a general electrochemistry attached to whatever advanced techniques, analytical techniques that we use later on. Uh, I want to briefly point out uh, the cell design that, that we use. So we went for a conventional uh, liquid, uh, base system with a, a metallic magnesium anode as the source for magnesium and for the cathode we went for this uh, layered TIS2 or titanium disulfide. The idea was we just use a very well-known layered structure and see uh, what, what sort of uh, phenomena we come across. A uh, critical co uh, component of this uh, cell design was the electrolyte. So we went for a dual salt electrolyte so we coupled the magnesium electrolyte with a lithium or a sodium analog to that with the lithium and the sodium salt component acting as the source for the, the monovalent ions. Yes. One of the interesting things that we, when we first got like the preliminary electrochemical data, what we saw was that electrochemistry wise, uh, we got an improvement in the capacity when we use the dual salt electrolytes, so the, the dual cation systems. And uh, as a result, uh, we found out that uh, the capacities of the dual cation electro, the dual salt systems were very similar. However, 
the key challenge of this work and also a, a motivation was to really decouple the effects of the magnesium from its monovalent counterpart. And, and as a result, uh, we really went for a detailed uh, compositional analysis with ICPOES. And what we found out interestingly was that uh, in the magnesium lithium system, where we coupled the magnesium with the lithium ion, uh, there was an improvement in the magnesium side of things along with the lithium. So we got like more magnesium inserted into the structure uh, along with equivalent amounts of lithium. Uh, Whereas in the magnesium sodium system, we saw a very different picture where the magnesium, the influence of the magnesium ions was super, very much suppressed. So we didn't really see cointercalation. It was, it almost acted like a, like a def, by default sodium ion battery with the magnesiums getting trapped in the structure after the first discharge. So this, this really uh, showed, like, like really baffled us initially is that what were like two seemingly similar systems, similar concepts, but uh, also the electrochemical performances were very, very similar. But fundamentally, there was a big difference in the contribution that is coming from the magnesium side of things. Uh, this was definitely a big challenge for us to, to, to really resolve. The, this this challenge that I just talked about, uh, it was important for us to resolve it. So we realized that uh, it's important for us to delve deeper into the system, especially into the structure. And what we did is we did detailed ex, uh, exadi of of both systems, and, and what we found out was that in the uh, the magnesium lithium system, the TIS2 structure when it when we discharged it and subsequently when we charged it, the, the structure didn't change. It was essentially the same. Uh, the, ref the reflections, uh, just maybe there was, there, there was a slight expansion in the structure. The reflection shifted a little bit towards the lower angles. And then when you charged it, they went back to their original position. So this, this told us that the structure didn't change. It just expanded a little bit when, when the ions went in. Uh, whereas in the magnesium sodium system, we saw a like, phase evolution taking place with progressive intercalation concentration. So what we saw is that, okay, the structure changed from uh, its starting phase, which is the O1 phase, to the P3 phase, and finally to the O3 phase. Uh, the thing is that with this phase change, what really also changes is the coordination environment in which uh, the ions get stored. And make, while sodium is like, its, it's preferable habitat is this uh, prismatic sites that you find in the, the P3 phase or the distorted octahedral sites that you find in the O3 phase, that's not the case for magnesium. Now, when you try to forcefully accommodate those magnesium ions in that sort of an environment, coordination environment, then you what you find out that there's this severe distortions which are induced into the main structural framework. As a result, what we realized is uh, that, yes, we need fast kinetics, but structural stability and associated thermodynamic stability is equally equally important when it comes to like battery performances and and charge storage and the overall stability of of uh, of the performance of a battery and uh, so i would really like to like keep it like just summarize by saying that structural stability is what we re what was our main finding that how important that is for, especially this sort of, uh, of a concept to really work. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, it's definitely possible, uh, and and that's that's really down to the fact. But I should really uh, again say that my work was focusing on layered materials, so my findings are uh, they should echo with and they should align with layered materials. So, but 
There have been reports previously, uh, especially with the well-known Chevrolet phase, for example, uh, where they talked about this sort of magnesium lithium coin decalation, which improved the, 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 the over potential issues that normally magnesium batteries face. However, in, in that paper, the, the effect or the phenomena was very different to what we found in this sort of layered materials because Chevrolet phase is a different structure. Uh, there was another report uh, which dealt with a high voltage cathode material and this was a really nice uh, like uh, work. It's with Prussian blue, uh, again, a material which is of great interest. Uh, however, in, in that work, uh, although the re they reported and sort of communicated that they saw coin decalation, but there are like a lot of practical challenges associated with that system because of the electrolyte that they use and consequently they couldn't use uh, a magnesium metal anode, for example. So they went for something like activated carbon, which is not a practical system. Uh, also in, in that work with the Prussian blue, they didn't really focus much on the mechanism. Uh, so we don't know for this sort of a cubic Prussian blue structure, how the structure plays a role in, in, in a potential co-indicolating setup, let's say. Uh, there was another really nice work done with TIS2, but that was more co-indicolation of not two cations, which is our work. We, we work with dual cations. That work was, was about a cation and an anion. So it was like insertion of magnesium chloride complexes. So it was like almost Mg2 plus and Cl minus. That work was also quite a nice work. We showed that uh, this sort of co intercalation concepts, they are quite diverse. It's not just uh, my work where we found, okay, two cations in a layered system. It's like different structures, different concepts, but they're all under the umbrella of a co intercalation uh, setup, let's say. So the future future plan is with with regards to my work. I think the what we re, one of the key findings, as I already mentioned a few minutes back, uh, was that uh, the magnesium and the sodium ion they didn't work. Now why they didn't work because of the size differences. And uh, how can we then mitigate this or, or take this information in and and take the next step? So magnesium and sodium are very different in size. But calcium and sodium are very similar in size. So with regards to layered material, if we are, our plan is to try with calcium and sodium, them being, in, them being similar in sizes, it's, it's uh, probably a, a good bet to try that because uh, then even when the structure changes, both calcium and sodium are sort of, preferring those new coordination environments that are being created when the structure undergoes a phase transformation. However, uh, again, small caveat, uh, calcium batteries are at, at a really early stage of development, much earlier than much of an earlier stage of development compared to magnesium. So there are like practical challenges involved, like the electrolyte is not that well developed and the understanding of the interaction between calcium metal and uh, and the electrolyte is again still there is a knowledge gap that exists. So although this is like the next step, but I think we have to be a little bit more patient and probably solve these uh, fundamental issues uh, with regards to the electrolyte and the anode before we can really uh, try this concept for for such a such a such a uh, battery. I would say.